Hello, real or virtual. Uh, we've spent a long time working on the system and figuring out the best way to support it. You know, making sure the cable is long enough, that the cameras have a wide enough tracking volume. And so we didn't want to show anything until we had technology that could support it well. And we've been working on it for a long time, but uh, really we started showing the Rift for standing experiences last September at uh, Oculus Connect with Crescent Bay. So in the the room that you just try, or the, the 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 room that touches in is a twelve by twelve room, and that we're tracking. Uh, we can go larger than that, but we're not really focused on trying to. Uh, we're not really focused on very large spaces. Most developers we've talked to are developing for smaller spaces than that. Uh -huh. uh, so that's it's not a priority for us to show it off. It'll be interesting to see see what consumers think of those technologies and if those get any acceptance. The biggest problem is that while your feet are moving, your inner ear does not get any acceleration or deceleration signal. So it doesn't solve the fundamental problem of moving in a virtual space. So we decided to sell them separately because not everyone will want to use touch. There's limited content that's going to be available for motion controllers for the first you know, year or so of virtual reality. And also a lot of people who would rather not pay the cost because they'd rather invest in other things. People who are racing uh, enthusiasts, for yeah. example, want to buy steering wheels. Or if they're a flight simulator sim enthusiast, they want to buy you know, throttle and stick. And so it didn't make sense to force everyone to buy touch when many people would rather put that money into a different type of controller that you know that's specialized for their game. So I mean what would be what would be worse for developers is the fact that for the last 2 years we've been telling everyone to use a gamepad. So lots of games like I mean, it's been in our best practices guide saying use a standard gamepad. And so like all these games, yeah. some of them have been in development for two years. Uh, e Valkyrie, for example, was designed very much for a traditional gamepad, yeah. not motion controllers. So we're not really worried about fragmentation away from what we've always been doing, which is supporting standard gamepad. That's why we're bundling a Xbox One gamepad with the Rift, so that every developer knows that every person who buys a Rift can play their game without having to buy a new yeah. controller. And so we're not trying to make every game support touch, especially right now. There's not very many games that support motion controls in general right now. Nothing to announce, uh, nothing to announce yet. But maybe in the future. No. <laughs>so touch can work with just one we show two in that room uh, uh, yeah. it helps with occlusion so like if i put if we just use one and let's say i use a slingshot and i put one behind then it can, the camera cannot see the other yeah, hand yeah, yeah. and like this problem is also not solved if i have one constellation camera here and one behind me also it cannot see it so we put two of them close to each other that way it's always able to see it from a different angle and never never yeah. lose track Oh, not really. I mean, the, w some of the things we've been developing internally are interesting, like Toy Box, but that's more of a uh, test bed than a real game. Toy Box wasn't designed to be fun. It was designed to let us experiment with lots of different interactions. And so, so like, some interactions are in there, but many we took out for this demo because there's just too many things. Uh, but there's a few other developers who have, who have started working on touch games that are going to be pretty interesting. I hope so. Uh, we'll be showing off more of them at uh, Oculus Connect. It's all about game design. So we have a much higher frame rate now, lower latency, and, uh, and very, very precise motion tracking. Yeah. And so it's possible to make, if you make a good VR game that's designed from VR, for VR from the ground up, it shouldn't make anyone sick. Uh, any any sickness you get right now is probably from the game not being designed around virtual reality or doing things like 
having you know uh, locomotion that can make some people feel uncomfortable. Uh, so I, th I think that developers have to create experiences that are built for VR from the ground up to avoid things like motion sickness. That's it. it, it it's very difficult to take existing games and port them to VR because they often just don't work well when you do that. You, you really have to, from the very beginning of the game, have VR in mind. Much more comfortable and fits a wider range of people. I think so. I think so. So we're designing multiple facial interfaces for the Rift to allow for use of glasses. Uh, we also designed it to have long eye relief from the beginning. So eye relief is the distance from your eye to where the lens is. Yes. And so by having long eye relief lenses that are bigger, uh, if you wear glasses, it doesn't necessarily reduce your field of view because it doesn't, you don't have to push the headset further away to use glasses. Uh, that's that, that was one of the design decisions. Like you may have noticed in DK1, DK2, unless you put it all the way out, it can maybe touch your eyelashes. Yeah. Uh, but in this, yeah. it's, it's much, right. the lenses are much further out, so there's lots of yeah. room in between. Mm -hmm. We just, we'll, we'll be launching it soon. Okay. Uh, it's not, yeah, there's, the, you know, there's lots of different moving, moving before, parts to release it. Do you think before the end of the summer? <laughs> Can't say it specifically, okay. but we've been working with Microsoft and NVIDIA and AMD on it. We are going, so it, people will have to keep making updates until we reach version 1.0 of the SDK. So we're releasing z version 0 0.7 soon. That'll be, and we're, we're maintaining compatibility with the last few versions of the run, or of the SDK in the runtime. But until we get to 1. when we get to 1.0, we will always support 1.0 forward, so you won't have to make updates. Uh, but until then, we can't promise anybody that they'll be able to just keep using old versions because we keep adding lots of new features and uh, optimizing the way the SDK works. So it'll, that, that is a problem right now, which is un, you know, we just have to deal with it as a dev kit. Yeah. Uh, but once we reach version 1.0, which we'll do, uh, before before the launch of, of the Rift in Q1. We're not trying to make a fully, uh, we're not trying to make a universal SDK. That's Valve's, Valve's project. Yeah. We don't, we're handling it in a very different way. For example, our SDK does things like a asynchronous time warp and we'll have more features like positional time warp and late latching and a lot of features that Valve just isn't even building into Steam VR. Uh, that's one of the reasons that the performance is much worse in Steam VR than in our native SDK. So we're not trying to actively support that. Okay. It just isn't really possible because it's 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 a completely different SDK from our yeah, from our own. So yeah, we 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 don't control it, and they are making decisions we would not make in an SDK. I think I think so. Some triple A's are investing a lot in virtual reality. There's there's kind of two sides. Indies have an easier time investing in new technology, and they are able to innovate faster. Yeah. At the same time, AAA developers have a lot of money set aside for research and development and for experimenting with new technology, that allows them to invest in games that maybe they know won't make a ton of money, like in VR, to make sure that they have some you know some exposure to the industry. Uh, I I don't know if I'd say that it's more indies or more triple A's. I think it's you see lots of lots of people from indie and triple A doing VR projects, whether it's public or or they're if they're keeping it secret. Yeah, we're working with several retail partners to make sure that people can buy in stores. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I do think it will because, like, right, the thing to remember right now is that VR can be successful without appealing to everybody. 
like not everyone in the general public has to want VR right now. Yeah. Uh, eventually, VR will get cheaper. It will get better. It'll get more comfortable. It'll get more, more small, and that's what will make the general public all interested in virtual reality. I don't think that no matter, almost no matter how cheap you made it right now, because of the quality and the bulkiness and because of the PC it requires, wow. no matter what we do, VR probably cannot be for everybody, but someday it will be. Yeah. It's, I mean, the, the first rift is going to be mostly focused on gamers and tech enthusiasts and people who are willing to buy technology that is on the cutting edge more than your average person, you know, like your mom or, you know, <laughs> yeah. your normal people. No, no timeline yet. Right now we're focused no. on Windows for launch, you know, like getting Windows 10 support built out okay. so that we can get that. That's a higher priority for us right now. So the biggest change is that it will integrate very tightly with the Rift so that all you have to do is download Oculus Home, plug in the Rift, and it will all work. You won't have to go through lots of different steps and trouble to get it working for every game. Um, and that, that's really going to be the biggest change is using our software to enable a really seamless experience where people don't have to struggle to get it working. More like a video software. Yeah, a little more like that, yes. Yeah. We are working on all kinds of different tracking technologies for, for input, but uh, the, the, they're, they're pretty separate right now. It's a complex, it's a complex topic, technically speaking, mm -hmm. but... Uh, Focal adjustment only solves people's eye problems for a small number of people. Most people have other problems like astigmatism or they have different prescriptions for each eye. And so making a mechanism that would allow you to account for everyone's vision problems would weigh a lot. It would be a very, very uh, would be a fragile, very heavy mechanism. And it would be very difficult for people to set it themselves without professional help. And so we decided that it made more sense to support to, to, to re try really well to support uh, glasses for people who need them and yeah. to try to support as many people as we could also without glasses, without having to, uh, without having to try and make the headset much more cumbersome, much heavier, more expensive uh, in a way that would only benefit some people. Can't talk about it, <laughs> but it's a combination of resolution and other optical factors. I don't think, I mean, most of what we're showing here at Gamescom is similar to what we showed at E3. So a lot of the same games, same hardware. So uh, there's not really too much new to say, I guess, except that it's good to be, to show everyone at Gamescom. Because Gamescom is actually much bigger than E3. E3 is only 60,000 people maybe, and Gamescom is like 350,000 people. So it's a lot more people. Okay. So we have a big booth here. And, Showing it to a lot of people all day. You have to go to Spain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 eventually. Yeah. There's a lot of events to, to go. Yeah, well. Yeah, to, you have to go. Ah, but then I'll have to. I'll, then I'll have to uh, be jet lagged again. <laughs> in, the, okay. in the future, we'll maybe maybe we come to Spain virtually. Uh, come to Spain. Maybe, maybe we can come to Spain yeah. virtually. Maybe. maybe, okay. maybe yeah. yeah, maybe we do Oculus Touch demo where I'm in the U.S. and you guys are in Spain. And that, 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 that'd be cool.